Hello? I've Hi. forgotten what to do. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, yeah. <sighs> Hello, I'm Jess. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> that was dicking around. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Jess. No, I'm Adam. And we are ForTheLandlords.com. We help landlords get more money, less hassle, and their time back. Indeed. We've got an Adam Asks video. Yeah. Uh, and um, I've cheated. Wait, wait, not cheated. These are questions, uh, but you've got a lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah, basically, um, these are all questions that people have put to us in the comment section of different videos. Um, and we've actually already answered them in those comments. Um, so I've cheated in a way, but they're all really good questions that most people won't have seen the comments or seen the answers to the questions, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we got liked it. Free, but, free content. Yeah, well, I, I, I hopefully, I hopefully yeah. I'm going to give the same answer. So I've typed the answer yeah. into to a yeah, question. So, yeah. The idea I've is I've got your gonna, answer here, and I'm going to see if it's still it, the same. If, one. if it's consistent, if it's the same, it's almost like a, 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 a test. But the idea is that you ask a question. You're either a landlord or you want to be. You're looking at the channel. Um, hopefully, we're putting content out there that you're interested in. And if you've got a question, you'll answer, ask it underneath the the video. We will always, always have them. There's no no questions um, that haven't been answered on the on the channel so far, and we're managing to keep up. Um, and we've picked out the most popular ones, and we're going to run through them, make a video of them, so that you uh, you've got it there, and it brings it to the to the forefront of your attention because there's there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, I'm, yeah, really cool. good. Right, let's um, go through them. Okay, let's, uh, one at a time. First one. Where hmm. is best to invest for different types of tenants? Okay. Um, hmm. I think. Um, for, for us, we have got, I wouldn't say one tenant type, we haven't, we've got, you know, there's, there's a, a range, um, but we prefer families. Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's, a, there's a tendency to, I wouldn't say over-categorize, but you know, you, I, I, I'd say you know, where, where, this is a question we get asked, a little bit different to that, but where can I invest for professionals or, um, young professionals or families yeah, or students, students or whatever, you know. Yeah. Now, as a property investor, I mean, if, if you've got a, a model that just says, I'm going to invest for students, I think you'll, well, hopefully at that point, before you even decide that, you figure out where, where the students are. It's near a university, isn't it, of course. But then when it comes to everybody else, um, it kind of pinpoints itself because we want somebody who is, is working, ideally. Now, if they're not working and they're on benefits, we want a guarantor, in which case the house is the same. Um, we want an, we don't want too close to a city centre generally. We don't want, I, personally, I don't like flats with service charges. Um, and and you, you might disagree, fine. Um, put, the, put it in the comments. Um, but I personally don't like that. I think the tenant is more transient. You tend to have somebody who, definitely when they get a flat, you want it that it'd have to be fully furnished and nice and you know all singing all dancing uh, you probably pay more for it and, and 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 generally speaking the rent isn't the same the right yield whereas if you buy a slightly cheaper per square foot property it might be a three-bed house it might actually be more expensive um then you're going to get a better yield um, mm -hmm. on it so yeah city center not so keen on um, for the high service charge, flats, more transient tenant. Again, you might disagree, you, you might love that kind of stuff. Um, personally, I get a better result with, with other stuff and so do most of our landlords. We rent some of that stuff out. I mean, I, I have got yeah. some of that property that I'm saying, oh, I wouldn't, wouldn't buy. And, you know, I've bought it in the past and it's sat in the portfolio we, and I just know it doesn't perform as well. We rent quite a lot of city centre flats. No, we've not sourced them. They're we ones that we've just taken yeah, on for yeah, time. Yeah. And I, I, own, I own some, but yeah. yeah, that service charge tends to be something that you're out of control of and it goes it goes up um sometimes it comes down i mean i've had a few recently where it went up in and then it started to come down again because it should be um you know it should be realistic but then there's a management fee taken out of it as well um so that when i say it's reasonably easy to say find the area it's all the other areas that are left that aren't too expensive and yeah. they kind of self-select themselves um we buy two and three bed family homes uh, where are they in a in a, in a big city um Another thing that landlord investors will often um, overthink, I think that's a fair word, is you know, access to and amenities and things like that. So you know, close to schools and buses and that. Uh, uh, we're in Nottingham, 
but I know that I can drive to any big city or small town even. And there's no five-year-old that hasn't got a school to go to. Mm. And there's no one that's much more than five minutes away from a walk from a bus. I mean, I, I live in a reasonably rural area. There's a bus stop five minutes walk from me. Yeah. And all my kids can go to school. So that access to amenities isn't, an, it's not a massive thing. I mean, all, everybody in this country, I mean, unless you live in absolutely out far in the sticks. But then yeah. how many houses are there like that? And that's not really an investment um, strategy to say, I'm going to buy, buy a, I don't know, barn conversion in the middle of nowhere times 10 and that's my portfolio that's not going to happen is it you're going to be buying family houses so um yeah i don't like the expensive reasonably low yielding city center stuff you can't afford the expensive stuff everything else in the middle if it fits that's your area yeah um remind me of the question just to check we've answered it where is best to invest for different types of tenants mm. it just depends on the tenant it, really. it, it, yeah yeah um of course, when you talk about different types of tenant, a doctor and in loads of money will want a bigger house, probably. I'm, I'm not going to cater to that doctor. I know some people yeah. do. I yeah, know some people yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. You know, they'll, they'll buy the really expensive house and rent it out for that, but the yield just isn't there. Um, so almost flipping the question on its head, decide who you want to rent to and why, or sorry, no, decide the kind of property you want and why, and then that's your tenant type. Mm. And, and I'm very happy with a family who lives in a property for a long time. I mean, take the city centre flat, somebody would be in and out in a year. Um, a three bedroom terrace house on a sort of 1950s planned estate, that kind of house, red brick kind of estate. Um, you've got a five year old and a 10 year old child in the house, mum and dad. They'll be there for five, 10 years probably. Mm. Um, much more stable. So cool. That's right. that one. Okay, next question. No pressure on the next one. Go on. <clears throat> How, how can you say you're the UK's number one property sourcer? We are the number one property sourcer in the UK. Um, we started using the title because um, we added them all up. It came to, at the time, 1,200 odd. And so we've, we've sourced and renovated, actually, Renov almost every one of the properties we've ever done. Yeah, most we've renovated, yeah. yeah. Not all, but, but, but most. And then rented um, 1,200 odd houses. I guess it's more now, it must be about 1,300 now. I don't know any more that's done that. Um, voted number one by your customers. Can't argue with that, can you? So, All yeah, right. that's... Um, I wouldn't say we're even self-styled. I mean, nobody came and put a crown on our heads. <laughs> but, but equally, we've been doing they it They might a, do one day. Well, we've been doing it for a long time as well. We've been doing it for... Oh, I've been doing it for 15, 16 years. Mm. Um, takes quite a lot of consistency. You yeah. know, a lot of people say they do it. And um, just look on our... Other channel, the renovations channel. There are Yons a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot of stuff. Go, I'm, go and watch keeps, some paint dry. Adam keeps what we call a deal sheet. So it's every deal that we've done, every property we've ever bought. And it's on Excel and it scrolls down forever now. Yeah, it just keeps going. All those addresses. It's uh, sometimes I do that. You know, I'm going your deal sheet and scroll down. <laughs> and yeah, we've done a lot. So we've done a lot. lot. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, next one. How do you mitigate against council tax for individual rooms? And that's obviously Ooh, yeah. in a that's shared top, house reasonably HMO. Topical, yeah. So uh, just to give a bit of background, um, we pay council tax on properties, of course. Um, on an HMO, a house in multiple, multiple occupation, easy for me to say, uh, it's one property rented out room by room. Uh, and usually, normally for, for years, the council tax was per property for the one house and it was all bills inclusive. Uh, sorry, you'd rent it out all bills inclusive as a landlord. So one bill for the tenant is for the room itself, heat, light, power, electricity, gas, water, broadband, and council tax. Um, little aside, if you're, if you're a student, you don't pay council tax or student houses, this has never been a problem. So just complete another piece of information in there. Um, so that's one of the benefits of potentially um, renting to students, although it's kind of been wiped out now with uh, purpose-built student stuff, but I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, what happened was the Valuation Office, which is the people who uh, value for council tax, decided, uh, so we're 2023 now, started doing it, I had one of these, I'm sure it was about 2017, 2018, something like that. Oh, was yeah, it one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I fought back and I, it wasn't, I have got the Valuation Office they came around and they decided I didn't have to pay. But what they were trying to do was say that every room in an HMO was banded individually for council tax. The lowest band, so that'd be A, um, which means that instead of paying, I don't know, I'm going to pick a figure, I can't remember exactly. 180 quid or something. Yeah, so instead mm. of paying 
500 pounds for the whole building, I'd have been paying 180 pounds per room, which is more. Um, no, you wouldn't for the whole building. You'd just been paying about 180 quid. Now you're paying 100 quid times five. I'm just, I'm just going. I'm, I was trying to work out what 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 was council tax. I don't. <laughs> I should know this. I know I should know it's this. It's gone from being one council tax bill to five council tax. Yeah, yeah. So, so one council. But I said yeah. one council tax was five hundred pounds. Yeah. I was trying to make it. Yeah. So what, one council tax bill is about two or three hundred pounds now. Um, you know when? Um, Maybe where you live. You know, well, no, mine's <laughs> grand. That's, grand. That's, wow. what I, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Is yeah. it? So I don't know how to work out what the council tax. Right. Is. The next question is how much is a pint of milk? So uh, well, I, know, I, I knew what was coming. Yeah. You know when they ask a politician how much is a pint of milk, I'm feeling like a bit of a yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to work out for my council tax bill at home yeah, what yeah. A, a council tax is. I'm, I'm now sort of going back to my. Uh, um, on the p and I know that an HMO is something like 200 and something pounds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So they, there's maybe. a number. So 200 pounds for the building versus 180 pounds per thing. You can see it's significant. The landlord's choice is then to absorb it or pass it on to the tenants and risk them leaving, etc., etc. Cause a load of problem. It made some HMOs completely, if you chose to absorb it, it made, as a landlord, it made them uh, unprofitable. If you chose to pass it on, it made them uneconomic and unrentable in the market. Mm. Problem. Um, it's not a problem now, uh, as far as uh, we're aware. And I've seen right at the beginning, when I got the valuation office round, um, I was able to show that they weren't bed sits, there was communal space, and you can get representation if you want. I didn't get a legal representation, but I pushed back to the valuation office and yeah, I got banded as, as, as the whole building. They put it all as, they sent you, the first thing they do is just send you the letters with the bill. Yeah, yeah. And if you pay them, you're kind of stuck. So I pushed back, I kind of uh, fought my corner. And I've seen other landlords fight their corner. And uh, last year, 2022, it kind of came out. I don't know the exact date, but it's definitely in now. There was noises within the government saying, we're not going to do this. And the valuation office have calmed themselves down and they're not doing it now. So um it's still a bit of a movable feast mm. uh, i'm not sure if it's absolutely concrete yet there's still sort of murmurings about some councils because it's the council that gets the money and the valuation office that charges it so there's a bit of ambiguity in there but there's also what we do with landlords i know some have been caught with it we've got a um an information pack uh, and we've also got a link to a, a facebook group uh, where all the landlords affected are in it's not our facebook group but we, we know of it and we've contributed to it so um, yeah, the way we deal with it is to push back, know that the absolute edict from the government is no, and some of that's still filtering down, put you in touch with a group of people who have fought this and they'll give you the support. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got an information pack as well. So cool. maybe we should put a link somewhere to um, get in touch, subscribe and not subscribe, put your details in so we can send you the way to get in Just touch Pop to, a link in this pop, in this video in description with my, a so link to yeah. my calendar booking. So if this book issue calling. affects you, click here and yeah, yeah absolutely. Fine. Yeah. So that's all we've got time for today. Yeah. We're going to keep reading through this list. We'll, I've got loads more. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll make mm. it the next part and the next part. So uh, yeah. bye for now. Thanks very much can for drag this out watching. For week. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it's, hopefully you're going to find it useful. Um, yeah. We'll we'll give it the same title with part one, part two. Well, they're um, all genuine questions these that are people have asked us, right, rather than so. us trying to think yeah. up content you might like. Yeah. This is genuine stuff that people have have asked. So, so someone's got to like it, right? Oh yeah, like. Bye for now. Like, oh, yeah, we should remember like that. Stuff. Like it and mm. subscribe it, please. That, yeah. If you like the video, like. And if you want more or to see the next video, subscribe. Apparently it helps algorithms. Yeah. Yeah. Bye for now. Go for it. See ya.